Hello everyone, anti breeder one in here and welcome to my late night video on antinatalism. I'm going to talk more about my ideas on the important, interesting and involving subject and I hope you will have a chance to relax, listen in and just get some ideas about what antinatalism means to me. I am anti breeder one m on TikTok and other places like WordPress and Instagram as well. So, I'm not an ethicist, and I make the distinction very clear. I'm not someone who believes that life, that human life, or even all life, should be extinguished entirely from the planet. Uh, and that means that I am somewhat placed in the category of soft antinatalist by some people's definitions. I do not always use the term soft antinatalist because I believe that it is somewhat, sometimes can be misleading. Um, but I'm happy to assume that that uh, terminology um, for the sake of convenience in some ways. So, as someone who's not really an ethicist but who is sympathetic to ethicism, I believe much more in quant quality of life than qu quantity of life. This is a very important distinction that I want to make. Quant quality over quantity. So if we are going to create life on Earth and on this planet, we have to do it with extreme, extreme care and extreme perfectionism. Um, creating life is not the same as creating a video on YouTube or, you know, creating a work of art or writing a poem or something. It's a very, very different proposition because you are dealing with someone's feelings. You are dealing with the, the, the ongoing feelings of somebody who is going to develop into the world and develop vulnerabilities in this world. So it's not a case of just breeding and hoping for the best. That's a very selfish and very vulgar and very dated sort of attitude. So quality over quantity when it comes to breeding. So, okay, I'm not fully opposed to stopping breeding entirely on the planet. Um, although it's definitely, we have to, I think effectively stopping as much breeding as possible is the effective way to do things. But I'm not totally opposed to um, selective breeding. And um, by, that, by selective, I mean really, really selective. Uh, I'm talking about, for example, the healthiest, fittest, most beautiful, good looking, um, and moral and ethical humans may be given allowance to breed and, and, and from that point share their children with people who do not have children themselves. This of course is a very con communal construct and it's a something, this sort of communal shared children sort of con construct is something that I've been thinking about for very many years. Um, I wrote about it um, in my teenage years under the name of Etherrealm, E-T-H-E-R-E-A-L-M. And I developed the idea that there should be a, communal, a community of people who have selective breeding and share their children among, among their community. Um, but of course, because there are so many people who want to breed, this sort of scenario is not even realistic at the moment because everyone's competing to, to create and procreate and procreate and procreate and this is causing an overload of, of people. So the, what we have to do is be much more selective, be much more reductive and much more careful with what we do. If I was going to produce a child and if I was forced to produce a child, for the sake of, you know, for example, um, the need to create resources, which there is no need, but if there was a need, I would do everything in my power to make sure that that child has good health, has good habits, has good education, has good morals and ethics, is vegan, and is perfect in every possible single way. And that's why I also believe in the concept of living modelling. And that's what it brings me to. 
Living modeling is a concept that I've talked about a little bit on this channel, but I haven't explained it terribly well because it's really hard to explain. Living modeling is, is essentially start out, starting off with a space and putting things such as beings, sentient beings in that space to occupy that space or that environment in the best and optimal possible way. So for example, you might have trees, you might have housing, you might have buildings, you might have technology, um, you might have um, all sorts of games and survivor, Australian survivor um, scenarios in that, in that particular situation. But that would be a situation in which the avatar or the person involved in that environment <clears throat> must learn how to live the best and happiest possible life that is possible on this planet and in that particular environment. So that's what living modeling is essentially, and it, you can you can um, you look search Facebook for hashtag living modeling as one word L I V I N G M O D E L L I N G, um, and look for the writings that I've done on that particular subject. I have done a, quite a few writings, an increasing number, but I haven't explained it terribly well. And there has been one person in the Facebook community who is connected with me, and 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 correlated my ideas with me and I found that really really useful and he actually understands what I'm talking about which is which is a pleasant surprise to me because I thought no one would understand what I'm talking about when I talk about living modeling but living modeling is finding the optimal um, sort of um, occupation of, of a life form in a particular environment the contained environment so <clears throat> obviously it needs someone to play God upon that upon that particular main subject or avatar and um, and everything that is in that particular environment is controlled um, to the greatest extent possible. So supposing that my minion Stuart here was the avatar uh, or the main subject in a particular space, he would have to go on particular quests in order to find his happiness. And this is why I stress very clearly, it's not, it's not exactly about being a happy individual in such a situation. It's about finding happiness. So things like finding friendships, finding knowledge, um, finding, you know, your puberty or whatever, finding um, adolescence, finding knowledge and research and, and interesting things, whether you're on an island or cast away or something but what you're doing is building and creating um, a haven for yourself which didn't exist before and all the skills that you develop as a result of that go straight into your mind and straight into your personal experience and that's what enriches life and makes life much more interesting and much more quality orientated than a life such as my own, where I'm not doing anything particularly special in life. I'm living in boredom most of the time. So that's the difference between living modeling and non-living modeling. And I wanted to create that distinction. It's also the great, the great distinction between um, being not effortless and being effortless. And effortless obviously is someone who doesn't believe in living modeling at all. But although I am sympathetic to effortless, I do not um, support the philosophy uh, because I believe that living modeling has great and vast potential to create quality life on this planet. So I could go on about um, other things about um, antinatalism and um, <clears throat> how important it is for the overpopulation crisis that we live in. So you know humans use up a great amount of resources and for one person to live on this planet for 80 or 82 years on average, um, that person is going to consume a great amount of resources and stuff up the planet in the meantime. So if we've got seven point, I think it's 7.83 billion people on the planet now, those people are going to consume a hell of a lot of water, land, resources, products, turn them into waste, shit out their backsides, you know, urinate and um, and generally stuff up the planet while 
I suppose if you're vegan, it, it's a concession to that, but not very much. And I believe that, as, as I know, as everybody should know by now, the number one thing we can do um, to reverse the negative effects of environmental destruction are to have one less child, or as the case might be, to have no children whatsoever, uh, otherwise to adopt and have dependents. And if we are really, really desperate to have com company and companions, to, to adopt a pet, uh, a companion animal like a dog or something, um, but definitely not to breed children and definitely not to breed um, excessive, you know, other things like dogs or or cats or something. So let's be sensible about it, folks. It's a really big and important subject, and I hope you gain something from my insight. And I hope you make a comment in the in the comment section below. Uh, let me know how you feel, and I will respond to all your compliments, complaints, and questions. Okay, folks. Bye from Stuart, my minion, and bye from me for tonight. Hands to be the one in. Have a good night. See ya.